good to give food and it's good to help people, but uh, we can't ever lose sight of the fact that it's the Word of God that transforms Amen. lives. Amen. You know, everything else is just preparing us. Brother Money, why don't you come preach for us? You gonna sit there and preach? Or? What's that? You? You want me? Yeah. No, I should have told that story. <laughs> Romans chapter ten. You will. Boy, I tell you what, I had a lot of time over that little props chair. I really appreciate that, by the way. We enjoyed that. That the friend brought the message for this morning. Brother Bradbury was called around up here a few uh, months ago. I heard him say to somebody, hey, he got some new messages. He got some new messages. I said, well, great. I, this is not a new message, so I don't want to do it. Amen. I felt led to preach it this morning. I felt like God had us to. This is a message that it's hard for a pastor to preach. All right? And so I felt led to do it. Romans chapter 10. Very familiar scripture to uh, most of you. Verse 13. I'm glad for this verse. For whosoever, I'm one of those, amen, shall call upon the name of the Lord, might be saved. Huh? I say it wrong? Shall be saved. Now, I ought to read this like the pastor. I can't hardly. How then shall they call on him? No, I can't do that. I love the way he preaches. I love it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As you read, if you read that and study that out, it's talking about providing means for the pastor. Amen? finances and so forth. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Well, it says the pastor's feet are beautiful. Should we try to prove that this morning? Huh? I'm about for that. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be here. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of God that we felt more than anything else. The, the good, sweet, uh, uh, just friendly spirit of the people. Yeah. And Lord, we pray that you bless the message now to each one of our hearts. Touch me first of all. I need it. Pray for your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful feet. It says the pastor has beautiful feet. Why would he say that? Why is, does it say the preacher's got beautiful feet? How beautiful are the feet of them? That preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now, I don't quite understand that maybe, but I tell you, I, I tried studying that out. Uh, just let me say this much to start with, though. You know, some preachers, some before they're called to preach, some desire to preach, some never even gave it a thought. I'm one of those. I, I what I did was I sang. I was booked to sing here and there, and when God called me to preach, I didn't want to. I, because before that, He said, What are you going to sing? I, 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 I couldn't talk. And when He called me to preach, it scared the life out of me. That was about three months before I ever did resign the fact that I'd got to preach. And that came about one night at my old home church down in, in Nashville, Tennessee, close by there anyway, Millersville, Tennessee. Pastor got up to preach a, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And I don't even know what he preached. He didn't preach on this verse. But I looked down and saw verse 16. It says, But though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Mm. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Yeah. Scare the life out of me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. When God calls a man to preach, he better preach. And I ran into several along the way that God called and they never have preached. And they've had all kinds of difficulties in their life, physical, uh, family, uh, you name it, financial, all kinds of difficulties because they wouldn't mind God. What I'm trying to say to you is, this man is here by God's appointment, Amen. not yeah. man's. Amen. 
Yeah. I guarantee you, I doubt that he very, I doubt very much that he asked God to call him to preach. He might have. Some do. But uh, we got, I don't believe his mama called or daddy called or, or, or preacher called. I believe God called him because of the way he preaches. I told you before, he's one of my favorite preachers. Absolutely. <coughs> I love to hear him preach. Yeah. But <sighs> the thing is, He's to preach whether he wants to or not. I believe he wants to. Now, when God calls a man, there's something God places down his side that makes him want to preach. But yet, at the same time, he's scared to me when he first starts out. My first message was about a 45 minute message. I preached it in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was on fasting. And after we left there, we went over to the Big boy restaurant, and I guess they got them up here. I don't know if or not. But anyway, we went over there to, to eat, and I ordered a meal. They said, I thought you was fasting. I wasn't. I fasted before that. Amen. I was scared. But uh, about 80% of our meetings, we we, we preach uh, one time or another, do a lot of revivals. Thank God. God's blessed us to be in some real good revivals. But uh, first Timothy 5 17 says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. What do you suppose that means by double honor? Sometimes I think we ought to pool everybody's finances, see what they make a month, and then average it out and get a pastor to double that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't mind that with your pastor. No. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate him working, but boy, I, I'd like to see the David come back up here and he's not having work, but this church is booming. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's where it needs to be. He, this is a full-time job right here. Yeah. People that aren't called to preach do not understand it. Betty's got a, uh, her first husband passed away, and her, her, her sister-in-law has told us several times, you know, some of us have to work, like preaching's not working. And they say it's an hour or a 30 minute message rather of the preachers is equivalent to eight hours of work. I don't know whether it's true or not. Oh, yeah. But I can tell you one thing, there's a lot of work goes into preaching. It's not just getting up here and delivering yeah. a message. Yeah, you're it's, right. When you, especially when you're a pastor, you've got everybody's burdens on your shoulders and praying for them. All right, let's carry on here. Here's what I'm trying to say to you. This is how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. We know that this building is not the church, right? We are. It's this bunch of oddball people sitting out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the church. Amen. Amen. For two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of yes. That's the church. The building doesn't make the church. This building that nobody's here is, hey, you, it's hard to have church by yourself. Amen. Boy, you get a group of people together to worship and, and, and praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I like your praise. Boy, that's important. I, I, I think I preached this. I know I preached it out of Michigan, but I think I preached it Brother Radbury's. Are you crazy? Not are you crazy, but are you crazy? Because if you're not, if you're not crazy, you are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. That's another message. You better watch out. But I, I believe we're talking about the church. What is the church? It's the body of Christ. Is that correct? Yes, amen. 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 So let's talk about the feet because I believe the feet are the body of Christ. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Now stay with me. You don't have a... Do I need to stay behind this mic? I'm no. not used to that. That's fine. I'll follow you. All right. I'm glad. But uh, some, some things about the feet this morning. First of all, the feet carry the head. Now here's the head. Christ is the head of the church, right? right. This man is not the head. He, see, he's not here to run this church. He's here to make sure that you don't. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> God's put him in that position. But see, he carries that head. He's carrying Christ. Like any Christian should be carrying Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. To a lost and dying world. What kind of a picture, what kind of an image do they get of Jesus Christ with your life, let alone the pastors? We get this idea that the pastor is supposed to be a cut above everybody else. Where 
does that come from? He ought to live a good life, no doubt about it. But if you're saved, you should be doing the same. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He carries the head. And then, well, he carries the body. I, I, I can say this with authority. The larger the body, the more weight there is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> what are you trying to say? I'm saying that as the church grows and as, as, as people have problems, they bring them to the pastor to pray. Of course, pastor, what should they do about this? And most of the time, they don't want Unless he says what well, they want to hear, they don't listen to it anyway. <laughs> but he carries a lot of weight in his prayer life. He's praying for you. And he's not telling other people about your problems, yes, about your habits, or what your sin you're trying to get out of your life. Right. But he's praying for you, and he's got a lot of weight on him. He's got this church. It's like, it's like this. If somebody in this church messes up and it becomes public, gets in the news and all that, the first thing they're going to do is find out who the pastor is of that church and they're going to blame him for it. Yeah. Correct? I hope not. I hope not too, but that's where it happens. They, 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 they blame the church. It's all the church. Hey, one person messes up and the world won't like the church. And so they fuss about the church. I knew that church was well, no good anyway. Well, hey, it's just one person. What about the rest of us? Yeah. Huh? Right. He's carried a load. Yeah. That's why he needs your prayers. See, that's why the pastor needs double honor, double the prayers of anybody else. Because the devil's fighting him tooth and toenail. <laughs> Amen? He needs your prayers. All right, I told you it's going to be a short message. That was another message, though. <clears throat> the thief must walk upright. Well, hey, brother, walk upright. Let me ask you something. Anybody here got the feet on upside down? <laughs> yeah, you better walk upright. Why? Well, I'll get into that in just a minute. You've got to walk upright. And the feet are set in a forward direction. Anybody here got the feet on backwards? Set in a forward direction. Not backward. All the things we could have done back here, all the things we should have done, no, he's going forward. Amen. Marching forward. Now, the body must cooperate with the feet if you're going to have a church. If you've got somebody here, or in any church for that matter, that's all time fussed about. It ought to be done that this way. It ought to be done that way. I don't think things are being done right over there. I don't think the pastor got. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. God gives the pastor insight the way he does anybody else. You give him an idea, God's probably already told him ahead of time. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is, I can walk because I'm balanced to what was in the middle. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but the point of the matter is, now listen to me. If, if the, the feet want to march on and the body refuses to, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's going down. Not only that, if you try to take over, if you get a little committee together, ah, this is what we need to do, whether the pastor thinks so or not, what's going to happen? It's going down. It's just going to destroy the church. The half must have this thing in perspective. God calls the pastor and says, We want to be there. I want to be or not, but it doesn't matter. God's going to have his way. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 So we must cooperate with the feet. The feet have to decide they want to go somewhere. What are you supposed to do? <coughs> go with him. Amen. No, oh, oh, well, I'm going to sit back here. Well, there you go again. <laughs> Got to cooperate. Well, what else we got here? The feet are slightly ahead of the rest of the body. There's only a big step. In spite of all this, I can still see my feet out there. See, I'm telling you, God gives him insight that he doesn't give anybody else. All right. It's not because he's super duper spiritual, but the thing about it is, God just does that with the pastor. All right. And he knows that. And that's a great responsibility. And it's scary sometimes, isn't it, Pastor? It's, it's, it's scary. Because when God 
God needs him. Folks, God's letting me know. <coughs> What's wrong with that one? Whatever it might be. God led me to have this program or that program. Or, uh, all I got to hey, hang back and let the church go down. That's what you'll do. And you'll be the cause of it, not him. Better watch it. Cooperate. Something else about that, that, that's a little high for a man my age. I get over here and read it. But the, 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 the feet, they uh, have to take more jokes. They can jump off something and land on your feet. How many of you think I've done better by landing on my head? Or <laughs> <laughs> on my shoulder? No, the feet are made for that. Amen? Amen. They're made to take more jokes. And he gets the jokes when you don't. He gets the blame, as I said a while ago, when you don't. He gets the pressure when you don't. How's he do it? God equips him. God equips him to do the job. Amen. Yes. And the only way to do it is your daily prayer for him. Yes. Not just once in a while, not just on Saturday night or Sunday morning. Shame on you. The only time you ever pray to your pastor is Sunday morning and say, Lord, give me a good message. <laughs> you ought prayed all week. Mm -hmm. It is your responsibility, you know, if you're part of the church. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm going to say I've been thinking about paying a dollar and a half for a long time. Anyway, okay. The thief got to have helpers. Needs some good help in the church. Appreciate Brother Bruce back there, man. If he plays the piano and runs the camera over there, too. Uh, Brother, you ain't doing enough. You need to get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I was saying. He's been back and forth, back and forth a dozen times since I've been here. But you see, there's little things on the end of that foot called toes. They're toesies. <laughs> now, let me see. That I think that represents the deacons and the, the, the Sunday school teachers, maybe, or the, the, the trustees, or whoever they might be. That's your that's your helpers, huh? But I want to ask you a little question. Most of you would know the answer, I think. When your feet start stinking, where do they start stinking first? Between the toes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Richard? Just simply this. That when a lot of people cannot handle the responsibility. Yeah. And they get placed in a place of responsibility, they suddenly think, I am helping run this church. I know you're not. God's run the church. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, they got to do it this way and that way. That is, hey, the toes have got to go through the foot to get to the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Sure. Amen. So, see, as an evangelist, when I want to do something in the church where I'm at, I, what do I do? Do I just do it? Uh-uh. Always ask the pastor. Yeah. Pastor, is it all right to do this? Is it all right to do that? <coughs> I don't ask you, not that you don't know anything, it's just that you're not the feet. You may be a toe, and if he puts you, he says, the pastor says, ask him or ask her, I'll do that because the pastor said to do it. But you go through the pastor. Yeah. Is that because he's smarter than everybody else? No, it's because he's the pastor. Amen. It's because God placed him there. See, God calls him he will. And to, 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 to go against him would be to go against God. Amen. Amen. A little louder. Amen. This side ain't doing no amen or all over there. God ain't amen. What do you say? Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, oh, me, uh, well, Miss Rebecca, you can remember that. Me? Miss Rebecca. You can go over here, Sam, and sign your This is old 
Fashion shirt. That means the woman stands out and the husband sits down. There's another part of that foot. It's called the heel. <laughs>
Amen? Amen. Amen. Doesn't like it. Well, I'm just about through, I think. When he rose to the dead, the disciples came and held him by the throat, held him by the hands. What are they holding by? The feet. How beautiful are the feet of them to preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Betty, you got the words to it? All right. Let's do something a little different this morning. Give me sand, it doesn't move, don't we? <laughs>